I'm T.W. Hawk. All I want is the truth. This is the algorithm of truth. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Stephen, for that awesome video. That was uh, something that had been uh, a, a desire in the back of my mind, and it all just manifested so magically and quickly. So Stephen contacted me on Friday. We shot it on Sunday. It was published the following Thursday. So in less than a week, I became a fully indoctrinated person of Lisbon. So that, that was really a, a great gift. And uh, also, thank you to Paul for this opportunity and this fantastic community that he has created. It's really a, a delight to participate in. Uh, so I've been a Hollywood entrepreneur uh, my whole professional career. And I'm, in fact, still a movie producer. Uh, and still make deals in Hollywood and still put together creative projects. Uh, I've been uh, a filmmaker and a writer, and I represent writers, directors, and authors. And I can see everyone reading what's up here. So The Algorithm of Truth is uh, my newsletter. And this is really where I combine all the things that have led to this point. So it's my career in Hollywood plus this quest for spirituality and world travel, which took me to Big Sur and to Rio and to Iceland and to Rome and eventually moving to Amsterdam and then here. And so it's spiritual wisdom, it's business wisdom, it's, it's a combination of all of that. And that's a flavor of what I'm hoping to offer you here tonight with this concept, which is um, I'm calling the inner godfather the inner godfather. And because we're a room of filmmakers and artisans, uh, I'm drawing inspiration from Francis Ford Coppola. So Coppola is a master craftsman, right? He's won Oscars. He's a producer, a writer, a director. He's made movies like The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, The Conversation, The Outsiders, Rumblefish, Cotton Club. So I was reading and researching Francis Ford Coppola, and he talks about the imperative when you're making a movie to be able to distill everything you're doing down to one singular word, which is the theme of your project. Right? It's, it's imperative to know the theme of your project. Because as a filmmaker, when you're commandeering a whole set and you have so much to be mindful of, often you may not have the answer or you're just overwhelmed with all the questions. And so having a singular theme is a great way to make your decisions when you may not have the time or you may not have the answer. So for Coppola, uh, Apocalypse Now, which was a Vietnam War set movie, that was all about morality. The Godfather. For him, one word was succession, right? Uh, Marlon Brando hands over the godfather role to his son, Michael Corleone. It's all about succession. So everything is about succession. And then in this film, The Conversation, where you have Gene Hackman is a, is a, uh, a private eye, and he eavesdrops on people and can record any conversation without their knowledge. And so for Coppola, his theme, his singular uh, uh, idea around that was privacy. And this, this came in handy when the costume designer came to him and said, what, what do you want the main character dressed in? What do you want Gene Hackman wearing in terms of a raincoat? He needs a raincoat. Should he be like Bogart, you know, like a standard uh, private eye, like evocative of a classic PI? And he just didn't know. So he reflected on what's the theme. The theme is privacy. And he went and looked at the different uh, options. And he chose a raincoat that you could see through. So a plastic raincoat that you could see through was translucent in the light. And that, to him, was emblematic of this idea of privacy. So theme, when we're in the hands of like a really uh, talented director that knows what they're doing, we will feel it. As, as the movie's unfolding, even on an unconscious level, right? We'll get a sense for the, the casting and the music and the costumes and the colors. Everything has like a singular vision. So that, that's, that's what theme is all about. Now, this can also be subconscious in our work as, as artisans, writers, creators, directors. So I've worked 
their whole career with a female writing team that have been uh, had landmark success in Hollywood and they've written 10 things I hate about you and legally blonde the ugly truth the house bunny and they uh, write a, a single theme in their work or a very common theme that they're not even aware of so it's something that takes place in their unconscious which is usually a underestimated woman sometimes blonde uh, has some ambition that everybody makes fun of and the journey of the movie of the character is proving to herself and to everyone around her that could, she can accomplish whatever it is she sets her mind on. So in the case of Elle Woods in Legally Blonde, she wants to go to Harvard Law. Everyone thinks this is laughable, but of course she does it and becomes an exemplary student. In The House Bunny, Shelley gets kicked out of the Playboy Mansion, has no skills whatsoever, and wants to be a house mother for a sorority, and she ends up doing that <clears throat> and proving everyone wrong that doesn't believe that she's capable of it. So when the writers write their projects, what they'll find is at the end of it, when they read through it, they're like, oh, we've done it again without even meaning to. So it's subconscious. So theme is something we can bring into our conscious awareness. So, so the last um, element of theme that makes it so powerful, having worked in film and also television and publishing and comic books and web series, different platforms, it's not character that translates across the, the platforms. It's not the concept. It's not the set pieces. It's really the theme that gives you tremendous versatility. So I know at least one person in the room that has written a feature script that needs to be repurposed as a TV series. And in doing that, when you know, like Coppola, what your theme is, it actually gives you a lot of uh, versatility and elastic quality for translating your story across these different platforms. I mean, in fact, Heart of Darkness was the book upon which Apocalypse Now is based. So you have this expression of morality in a novel, completely unlike a uh, Vietnam set uh, wartime epic. Okay, so looking at theme, it gives you a singular unity, congruence, it's versatile. Like these are all, as I reflected on it, this is like great life skills actually, not just even in our craft and in our work, but if we apply them to to our life and how we live. So what I'd like to do is just a short exercise that involves everybody that will explore this idea of like how we find our inner godfather. And we'll, we'll take a little hint from, from the film business. So what I'd like you to do is just pitch yourself to the person next to you or someone that, who you don't know. And, but your pitch should be very simple so that it's short. It should be who you are, what you do, and what genre you're in right now. So what, what do you mean with that? What genre? I'll explain. So in other words, what is your life? Is it a romantic comedy? Is it a thriller? Is it a family drama? You right? Is it a workplace sitcom? Like what genre is your main character in right now? And, and your main character is you. You are the main character of your life. You are the writer, the director, and the star of your life. So pitch yourself in 30 seconds or a minute, and then we'll switch. I'll call it out after a minute. Just pitch who you are, what you do. So I'm T.W. Hawk. I'm a media entrepreneur, a writer, a filmmaker, and I live in a magical, romantic adventure. <laughs> Okay, that's my genre. So go ahead, give it, give it a shot. Find someone, spend a minute. You're going. All right, my name is Paul Tracy. I'm an actor and I'm a filmmaker. And um, right now I'm in a coming of age story about a man who leaves everything behind in LA and moves to a foreign country to chase his dreams and to build a new life. Uh, uh, my name is Kevata. I'm an actress, but also many other things. Um, what genre? I was going to say, uh, coming page, so many I never said it because I was like,
so... That's you, man. Everybody come back. I know it's fun. Okay. All right, so who who wants to who wants to volunteer their pitch? Who want who who wants to offer the, their pitch? Does anyone want to share? She was really good. She was really Okay. Well, so 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 but do you want to go Stephen? So cuz I was uh, okay. Well, <laughs> your genre doesn't exist. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So, Let's see. so okay. no, no. So, who are you? I'm Barbara. I'm from Prague. I'm director, and my genre would be adventure, probably. An adventure, probably an adventure. Probably because it's like mixture of all other genres. But I would cover it with uh, adventure. Adventure. Yeah, I have to have adventure in mind as well. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Anybody else? I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Do I have to go? No, no, you don't have to. Um, I'm Thank you. I'm a, um, a curator, designer, and an auctioneer at times. Ah. And at times. Uh, not every day. Uh, because auctions every day. Um, and the genre to my life, or my story, would probably be... What did we say? A curry genre? Oh, tra tragic comedy, but actually that's a bit pessimistic, so let's just go with um, a mix of all copies. Yeah, copy of you. The like curry of all genres. Yeah. It's yeah. a combination of all genres. Yeah, yeah. We gotta pick a I genre though. Genres. In the marketing, you can't just say it's an all genre movie. <laughs> yeah, Jackie failed out because she missed movie. <laughs> Tragic comedy, yeah. okay. Yeah. Tragedy and comedy, yeah. they're, they're, they're like two sides of the same well, coin, actually. Irish, okay, well, <laughs> some Irishmen in the room, Irish people. Irish group I, over yeah, I see that, this little cluster. <laughs> Anybody else have an exciting genre they want to share? Okay, so the next step is this, we're gonna go a little deeper. So now it's not who you are or what you do, but it's why you are. Why are you? Why are you? Yeah, I see the confused looks, but just go with it. Why are you? What is, what is the answer that comes up? And share that with the other. Why are you? Why is your main character? Not this is what they, what they, what they do or who they are, their name, all that stuff, but why? Why this main character? Is that related to justifying your genre or why it exists? It's up to you. <laughs> why? What comes up when you answer that question? So let's try that. Just share that. Share your why. Same person. Yeah, same person. Same person. <laughs> <laughs> I already answered the question. Oh, I have to do. Oh, I have to say, why? Okay. Uh, I, I just have one life, and I'm actually gonna respond to the why I'm an actor. So I, have, I just have one one life, but I have too many passions, too many desires. So I wanna live as many lives as possible to, to be able to be in those characters for, for at least like a, even a day. Me? So I will say. Memento Mori. <laughs> so I do only my job to contribute to the wonders of life. I'm just doing my part. <laughs> well, you mean your profession or scary calls?
So let's 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 hear let's hear some whys. Let's let's hear some whys. Who who wants to share? Who wants to share their why? Or if you don't want to share your why, share your your partner's why. <laughs> yeah. Memento Mori. Memento Mori. I contribute to the wonders of life. Okay. Well, that's even more than the Memento oh, Mori. Yeah, that is eminent, you know? so, well, Indeed. We come here for like the bees fly around. Mm -hmm. So, but you contribute to the wonders of life. Okay. So that's your why. It's a job. It's fantastic if it's your job. If your why is your job. Any, anyone else? It's a beautiful why. Anyone else? Have a, have a more superficial why? <laughs> Just here to have, I have fun? I have a more superficial why. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, my character is this character because uh, I, she doesn't settle. Doesn't? Yeah. You're not an un, unsettled? <laughs> uh, yeah. You're a non set a non settler. Well, you want, you, like, I don't think it's it's not not unsettled. It's more. I think we had similar ones because I said authenticity. Like my character was about authenticity, being authentic to yourself. Yeah. And I think it's kind of similar. Yeah. It's like Without you're not going to settle for something that doesn't feel right, and you're not going to settle for something that feels convenient or like simple. You're gonna you're you're not going to settle. You're going to yeah. go after what you really want. Yeah. So, 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 tr so true to self. Well, this, this is why, as an exercise, it's actually good to have the other person share it so that you can hear what it is they heard, which is also, it's a, it's a pitching exercise and a listening exercise. So that when you're, when, when you're expressing who you are, what, what's important to you, are you really getting across that which you want to and you want the other person to step away with? Right? That's really important. So who else can share a why? Rita? Yeah. I don't want to say hers. You want to say hers? Yes. Is that OK with you? Yeah. All right. I guess so. Let's hear it. It's her mission in life. Is? She what is? A, she has a mission. Yes. And that's what makes her. But what is the mission? I don't know. I just feel it. It's something um, like you're born with something, like mm. you're born with a purpose, and you just don't know where it comes from. It's mm -hmm. just there, and you just have to follow your um, intuition, your guts, and it's gonna take you somewhere. I don't know where, but it's gonna take me somewhere. Beautiful. And, yeah. and you just gotta enjoy the ride mm. until you get there. Mm. You know? It's not about the destination, it's about the the journey. The journey. And do you, do you know what That's the expression? Sorry. Do you know what? <laughs> it's not cheesy. Do you know what the expression of your purpose is, though? The expression. Well, in other words, right. You you feel a sense of purpose, a sense of mission, but do you know what that? It's like, is it to teach school children? Is it to explore the world? Is it to? Sh I think it's about inspiring others. It's about sharing your stories sharing life experiences with others mm. and hoping that people can relate to that and not make the same mistakes and mm. um, I don't know it's about inspiring others the same way that I got inspired by so many great people um, people or stories People's stories. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Inspiring others through sharing and storytelling. Yeah. Right? Okay. So what, how does it feel differently for you to share like your, your who, your what, or your why? Like where does the why come from? Like inside you. Can you feel a from difference the from the heart? The inner child. From the inner child. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? It's more about, about self-consciousness. The subcon and is that up here or is it? It's like the authentic yeah. self. Yeah. So, 
I mean, ultimately, whatever name we put on it, it's, it's like a deeper place, right? It's more from our gut, you said, from our heart, our intuition, our inner knowing, like whatever this divine map is that we have, that we just come in with this, this awareness and we don't know where it comes from, but it's there. So that's the inner Godfather. That is the theme in our lives. And as we explore this and bring this to the surface so that you know, you're sharing the wonders of life, like so when you're overwhelmed, things are coming at you rapidly, you don't have time to really reflect on it, you can just go to that place and say, well, what, what is my purpose? What is my theme? Like sharing the wonders of life. Does this, taking this decision, does it further that purpose? And if it does, then it's a yes. And if it doesn't, it's a no. Or you need another wardrobe choice, right? Like Coppola. But when you make these decisions from this centered, deep place within yourself, then life unfolds like a masterpiece. And that's how Coppola ended up with three Oscars for you know, Best Picture, Writer, and Director for The Godfather. And even you know, topped that with The Godfather, too. So living, deciding, being, uh, working from that place, not only in our craft, but in our lives, enables us to create a true masterpiece, which isn't necessarily on the page or on the wall or on the shelf or on a screen. It's not something we watch. It's something we live by channeling and being in touch with our inner Godfather. And that's how we direct the masterpiece of our lives. Thank you for listening and participating. Just give me some truth.